Hi everybody, my name is Saru Briley and I feel very privileged to be able to share my story with you today. As the intro showed, I was only five years of age from the slums of India, uneducated, when one night I boarded a train looking for my older brother. It was a night that changed my life and destiny forever. 23 years later, after growing up with my adoptive family in Tasmania, I discovered Google Earth and went about trying to find my way, uh, my hometown in India. I had never given up hope in finding my family in India and so the long search began for years and years and years until 2011. In 2011, I'd been searching for years and years and ages, and I was almost, I thought to myself, you're sort of searching haphazardly. And uh, I was basically trying to look for a few images which I'd remembered when I was a little kid of my hometown. And so I thought to myself, well, let's be a little bit more strategic and, uh, and think about this really simply. And so I thought to myself, well, you know, perhaps a bit of science may help, or a bit of mathematics. And so I thought to myself, well, I ended up in Calcutta at the Harrah train station. But I also know that I was on the train for about 12 hours, approximately. I'm just sort of gestimating at the moment, um, and prior. And I also know that the trains were sort of doing about 60 to 70 kilometres per hour. And so I thought to myself, well, why don't you just times those together and get a kilometres per hour reading, or kilometres reading distance. So I thought to myself, all right, well, I'll use the, uh, the ruler tool on Google Earth, and then what I'll do is that I'll go down to Calcutta at the Howrah train station, put a pin there, and stretch it out 980 kilometres. And I thought, OK, that's a radius. So I thought again, now I'll put another one adjacent to it and another one, and another one, and another one. And what had actually happened was it started to form a curve. Well, initially, it was a circle right around uh, Calcutta station, the Harrow train station, being right in the centre. And I thought to myself, well, I'll take what I don't need on the right-hand side and just keep the curve, which is within India. So that's how it turned out to be. So I, I took out the... Um, the, the white line, which is on the right-hand side, and just kept that curve, that, uh, that arc, which started all the way from the Himalayas and turned down towards the bottom end of India, the Orissa. So I thought to myself, well, you know, my hometown isn't going to be right on that arc or anywhere on that arc. It's going to be sort of out to the left or perhaps a little bit further in. I had to be sort of flexible about everything, you know, and didn't get my hopes up. Um, I didn't want any stone unturned, so I started searching left to right, left to right, going up and down, up and down, and, um, and I did that for quite a long time. And so a little bit later on, I decided, well, you've been searching more on the right-hand side of India. And uh, I thought, well, why not try a little bit more to the left, towards Mumbai? I thought to myself, well, you know, I don't really want to go there because I can't really imagine myself or ever, really, that I could travel all the way from the west end of India to the right end of India, to the, the east end of India. That is such a long trip. So I thought, well, you know, once again, don't, um, there shouldn't be any stone unturned. So I, I thought, let's have it a go. And uh, when I started one night late, um, having a look around in the, the right, in the left parts of India, way past that um, arch there, um, I sort of saw this train station that uh, I started to zoom in. I thought to myself, well, you know, the first thing, if the, I've got this memory of the train station, I know exactly the way that it looks. And I said to myself, on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side, there should be a uh, industrial water tank, and on the right-hand side there should be a train station with a flyover bridge. And then a bit further on there should be 
a, a ravine about 200 metres away from the, the train station. And so I thought, that's what I should be seeing if it's the right train station. And that night, this is what happened. I zoomed in and got further and further, and uh, the refresh rate back then wasn't all that great, so it's not as fast as this. But there it is. Now, I'm the only person that can really tell that there's an industrial um, water tank on the left-hand side, but as you can see there, there is actually a flyover bridge, two platforms and a main train station um, on the right-hand side. And a bit further on, there is a ravine, uh, which I really know that it's there. Now, this picture here is exactly the same picture that is projecting. I mean, I can see it right now in my memory. And so I thought to myself, what's the name of the place? And so I zoomed out, and I thought it should be Burrampur. And when I zoomed, down, I zoomed out, it came up to Burrampur. So I thought to myself, all this time, I had been looking for a place, spelling it wrong, and pronouncing it wrong. But, you know, I was only a child then, um, uneducated, I said before, and that's as much as uh, I really knew. So this was the town that I boarded that night when I was looking for my brother. I thought to myself, well, OK, don't get your hopes up. You're not actually from this town. You're actually from the town prior to this. And so I thought to myself, all right, I'm going to um, scroll up a little bit more. So as I was sort of flying over, I said to myself, if it's really, if the town that comes up that is really your town, then the first thing you're going to see is a river. And on the right side, on the left-hand side of the river, you're going to see a, a, a dam wall. And then on the right-hand side, you're going to see a bridge, for, a flyover bridge for the trains to cross. And so when I started scrolling, gradually, I mean, my heart was going triple time. I was thinking, you know, back in my conscious that this is actually the town, but I'm sort of playing games. My brain's playing games. There's chemicals going everywhere. And... Uh, when I, when I zoomed out and flew across, this is actually what happened. In a minute. So I started to zoom in, and there it was. On the left-hand side, you've got the water dam, uh, and then on the right-hand side, you've got the flyover bridge for the trains to cross. Now, this photo here, I was, when I was searching, I was being very specific. So it had to match exactly what I was projecting in my memory. And the architecture of this, uh, this sort of a, a, a dam over here uh, that's been blocked up, blocked up by the wall on the left-hand side, it's where I used to play with my brother, uh, two brothers. And I said to myself, well, prove to yourself that you can uh, make yourself from anywhere of, uh, in that point of that dam back to the town centre. I said, that must be the easiest thing ever. I've come to this place so many times when I was a child, all by myself, to wash myself with my brothers, um, or it was when it was really hot. So I thought, OK, I'll, uh, I'll scroll up. I need to go about 100 metres up, a bit of left and a bit of right, and then I should be sort of almost near in the town centre. So I was scrolling just, little, just slightly, and, uh, and I was getting really excited. And before you know it, um, I was sort of standing, looking down at the town centre of my hometown. I said to myself, on the left-hand side, you should see a fountain, and there's the fountain. And then I said to myself, on the right-hand side, you should see a train station with three platforms, and there it is. And I said to myself afterwards, OK, well, perhaps there's another town that looks like that. And hence, you know, I'm still playing games with myself. I didn't want to sort of, um, you know, be let down on expectation that, you know, if it is in the town, then I'm going to fall down and walk away in dismay. So I sort of gave myself another challenge and uh, said, well, you know, challenge yourself that you can make yourself back as a little kid from that road there back to your home suburb. And so I thought, that's really easy. I've walked to this place here heaps of times, day and night. And so I started walking and I started scrolling and pretty much my hand that was on the mouse was just in auto mode. And uh, I just knew where to go. And, uh, and so I thought, OK, I've got to go underneath the bridge and then I'll come up to a, a Y junction. 
And then I said to myself, perhaps I can uh, take the scenic route or I could take more of the squarish route. And so I said to myself, well, let's go and take the scenic route. I know it really well. And, um, and before you know it, I was uh, scrolling through um, heading towards my town suburb, or well, home suburb. And there it was. This picture of my town suburb, that uh, home suburb that I hadn't seen for about 25 years. And, uh, and I couldn't believe myself. I felt so elated with emotions that, you know, how could it have been possible that I've done this? It's, I, I thought, you know, this is so surreal. And I said to myself, on the right-hand side, prove to yourself that you can, you can find your house. And so I thought, that's really easy again. And uh, I thought, you've got to go through some nooks and crannies and a bit of left and a bit of right. And before you know it, that um, you'll find your house. It's got a tin roof and a sort of mango tree on the left-hand side. So uh, I, I sort of felt that night, it was about 2 o'clock, that you know, I, had some, I had done something that was absolutely amazing that I thought that I would never be able to do. And so the next day I thought, you know, I've got to tell my mum and dad. And, uh, and so um, in the morning, the next day in the morning, I sort of had to check again that, you know, this isn't a dream. Um, this is actually for real. So I did that in the morning and, uh, and checked it again, and yes, it was real. And then when I got to work, I had to sort of, you know, manage a time perfectly where I can see my dad because he was in the uh, office. And, uh, and so I thought, you know, I got the guts to go up and tell him. I didn't know what he was going to think. So I opened the door <laughs> and he was um, sitting down and, uh, and, he was, and he's busy, as he always is. And, uh, and I said to my dad, oh, look, I've got something to tell you. And I said to him, I found my hometown. And uh, he goes, what? Um, he was really gobsmacked, you know. How can a kid at the age of four and a half, five years can find his hometown after 25 years? That's to, you know, he just, he just couldn't sort of fathom that. And, uh, and I said to him, well, I never ever lied to you before. And so uh, I asked him, you know, if I can go back to uh, my hometown um, a year later and, uh, with these permission, and he said, no probs, you know, if I was me, I'd do the same thing. So this is what happened when I went back to my hometown um, after finding it on Google Earth. There, at the end of a lane, after 26 years, Saru's mother, Fatima. I've been back several times to India to visit my family, and the most recent was a very emotional one, where my Australian mother met my Indian birth mother. This is my mother, Kamala. Hi. Kamala, this is Kamala. my mother, Sue. I feel very lucky now that I have two families, one in Australia and one in India. And I'm also very grateful towards my mum and dad, Sue and John, who are in the audience today. And, <laughs> for their unconditional love and also for giving me another chance of life, which otherwise I would have never had. And also, I'd like to thank Google Earth for the Google Earth application, because without this application, none of this would have been possible. Thank you very much, Google. <laughs>